Hey guys, um, the uh, Ralph Lauren has come to us, and uh, and the, the Ralph Lauren team brought with them uh, pictures of Ralph's actual uh, uh, cabin in Colorado, and uh, that's what we're basing this build on. So it would be a beautiful alpine cabin interior, and. Uh, it would be normally made out of split logs, but we don't have a million dollars worth of split logs, so we are going to make rough hewn lumber out of pretty lumber. Actually, it's knotty pine, but, uh, but Matt's going to show you some serious stuff. He's going to beat the crap out of everything. I'm not wearing a flannel, which is still way too warm for in Texas, but, uh, you know, theming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Step one in making this nice, pretty, plain piece of pine look rough hewn is to fake some mill marks. And I'm going to take this saw and I'm going to fake big old cirque saw marks as this would be run through in an actual lumber mill uh, into, into this. So I'm going to take my, my saw here and instead of doing it like this, I'm going to kind of fan it out like this as, as this would be the, the massive circular saw, circular saw in the lumber mill going over and, uh, and cutting the piece out. So this may actually not show up too well on camera right now, but when we do the staining, it's going to become very, very evident and pretty cool. My next weapon is the hatchet, and I'm not actually using this to try to look like this board has been hatcheted. Uh, this is more to fake the general handing handling uh, procedures you would have in a, in a large lumber mill. The big metal things are going to grab it, and also just some general, general wear and tear. Um, I don't want to do this evenly over the whole thing. I want to do a couple of spots that are concentrated, and then move on, and that that uneven localized patches is going to be a theme going out with most of the rest of my, my weapons. And now for the hammers. I don't want to use this one to do distressing. You may often see some artificially distressed pieces that are very obviously done with, with the hammer, which is going to come down and hit that away. And it's going to look like what it is. It's going to look like you hit it with a, a, a claw hammer, the, the hammer side. I will use the claw end of this one to tear some chunks out. And then for just the regular dent distressing, I'm actually going to use a tack hammer because that, that square head is much less readily recognizable as, oh, you whacked it with a hammer. This last one's my favorite, and it looks like a medieval weapon because it pretty much is. It's a chain flail. Uh, just whacking stuff with chains is a pretty common and popular way of distressing wood. Uh, because of how much we have to do with this one, I went ahead and used a locking shackle and an eye bolt and made a wooden handle and made a chain flail, so I'm not just swinging chains around without a nice handy handle. Uh, I'm going to put this on the floor to chain flail it, otherwise it's going to be bouncing up all of the sawhorses and uh, just become more difficult. So. I'll see you on the floor with a chain flail.
It's not as exciting as the chain flail, but uh, the razor blade, I'm going to kind of carve on the edges some to make them less uh, square and regular so that when we put our caulk on our, our, uh, our faux chinking, it'll make the, bo they make the board look more irregularly shaped like it was actually came off of a log and not a piece of 1 by 12. Now comes the stain when we're going to uh, flood this all with our, uh, our stain. So all of the little cuts and little trauma scars that we just made on the surface of our, our board have exposed little bits of end grain, which once we put the stain over there, it's going to show a lot more contrast as that end grain sucks up more of the stain. And before we let these sit so the stain can dry, we're going to flip them over so that all of these little pockets, all the extra stain can kind of weep out of there so we don't have puddles that are going to surprise us later on once we have it mounted to a wall and start making ugly drips. We don't want that. We skipped a bit as far as the video is concerned. Um, but we, uh, each of those boards that we just did, we had about 30 of those. And uh, we varied the width in the board. So they start out as 1 by 12, which were actually 3 quarter by 11 and a quarter. And we ripped those down to anywhere from 10 to just leaving them at the full 11 and a quarter. And then we also varied the width of the, uh, our, our faux chinking in here to go anywhere from 2 to 4 inches, such that uh, every uh, panel that's going to be going in is a set size, so that we had board chink, board chink, board chink. Uh, in each uh, each section, so that when one of these stacks on top of the other, it, you're not going to have an obvious seam in there. We've also got this built modularly widthwise uh, onto different frames. So we have a continuous board here that we chop down, so that we can then separate these like so for transport and uh, easier installation. So we're not trying to move this one big massive wall section at a time. It's uh, cut down into bite-sized pieces. Another uh, specification from the client was these uh, kind of nice big cobblestone size river stones to make the actual fireplace out of. And rather than make this thing weigh a million pounds and be impossible to move, we used a uh, polyurethane foam uh, cast stones. Uh, they come in sheets, they also come in individual stones that look like potatoes. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so this is uh, three sheets of, of that stuff, uh, and then because, though they do make corners for that, they're pretty much only, uh, only applicable to larger pieces, and there's a, a, a set size that it would have to be to use those, and we didn't want that size, so we had to kind of uh, make some stuff up. So what I did was I took some of the, the longer potato stones, and uh, I made them into hot dog buns on the table saw. This is not the safest thing I have done this year with the table saw, but this stuff is soft enough that I wasn't worried about it kicking back and being thrown at me and then pulling my hands or my pushers into, uh, into the blade. Um, so I got it more or less lined up um, in line, and because it's round, I couldn't get it straight through just using its own rounded edge on the, uh, the fence of the table saw. So I used these handy little pusher pads the, from our jointer and I squared those up against the fence and then ran it down uh, to get that nice little V cut out of there so that, that can go on, on the corner and look like it's embedded in the corner rather than being the hot dog bun wrapped around the corner. Another thing that the client wanted was this nice massive slab of a mantle for our fireplace. And rather than spending umpteen billion dollars on a single massive 8 by 12 slab of pretty much an entire tree of, in this case, it's actually mahogany, um, we faked it, kind of. This is actually still real mahogany and it's, it's, it's uh, 
thick stuff, but it's not one solid slab. So it's got this nice, this is the actual chainsaw uh, from the rough mill that we left on there because we like that, that nice rustic feel. To make the whole thing a slab, similar style to this guy here, uh, we have just a, uh, a thinner faceplate um, built up in a box structure. Uh, this is all, so this is thinner wood. This stuff is six quarter. Uh, it's pretty burly stuff still. So we planed that down some to get a good uh, finishing edge that we could uh, uh, attach to in, on the inside. Um, and as much as is visible behind the uh, fireplace, we probably could have gotten away with just using the face piece and a plywood bottom and then staining that to a close color. Uh, but we didn't. Uh, we made the whole thing out of, uh, out of mahogany and then to cover up where that nice um, clean cut was from our table saw, we uh, got, an got an electric chainsaw and then chewed that up to kind of rematch the, the rough mill chainsaw texture on that. So there is a massive, mostly fake, slab mantle. Which brings us to our uh, rustic, rustic cabin. Uh, this is one small section of uh, a much larger set. Uh, it's all, I think I said before, modular for uh, transport and uh, easier installation. And uh, hope you all learned something on uh, making the faux stuff, uh, the, the rotary cut and all that. So this is the first round of early happy holidays from Gratuitous Sets in our new mountain cabin retreat. We will see you next time, hopefully soon.